Hi all, welcome to the video. Today we are diving into ECS Service Connect, a feature designed to simplify service to service communication in ECS using user friendly names. With AWS planning to phase out App Mesh by 2026, ECS Service Connect is now the recommended solution for ECS services. To quickly recap how App Mesh works, Imagine two ECS services, Service 1 and Service 2, hosted in Account 1 and Account 2 respectively. App Mesh created in a separate account is shared with these accounts using RAM. However, Cloud Map Service Discovery namespaces remain account specific and they cannot be shared across accounts. When Service 1 needs to talk to Service 2, it does not know service 2's IP but knows a friendly name like service2.ap.com. Service 1 makes a call to this domain which is routed through AppMesh. AppMesh resolves the domain to the correct IP by consulting the namespace in account 2. Once the IP is retrieved, service 1 connects to service 2 via transit gateway or VPC pairing. Now, ECS Service Connect simplifies this process while serving the same purpose, facilitating service to service communication. Unlike App Mesh, it reduces complexity but with some trade offs. ECS Service Connect supports communication only within the same account and region, as namespaces are not shareable across accounts. It uses Cloud Map namespaces to group ECS tasks logically and enables connections between services spread across different clusters, subnets or VPCs but within the same account and same region. Short names like service2.ap.com and the standard ports like AT or 8080 or any port are used for easy communication between ECS services. Let's see this in action through a demo. I have already cloned this repo. Go to the make file. We can create the entire infrastructure by running a single make apply command. However, let's create the resources incrementally so that you can follow easily. Let's create resources like VPC, subnet. I mean, we are going to create uh, two subnets. One is public subnet, another one is private subnet. Basically, I'm going to deploy two applications called service A in public subnet and service B in private subnet. Service A will call service B. We should also create things like Internet Gateway which will make one of the subnets public, route tables for those subnets and then security group for the ECS tasks. Before that, let's check the AWS profile. Okay, we are using account A2. Let's do Terraform init. Okay, it is completed successfully. Let's run the deploy VPC command. And this has created all these resources. Let's see them in the console. It has created this VPC, my VPC, and then two subnets. This is a public subnet and this is a private subnet. Internet gateway is attached to the route table of the public subnet. The route table of the private subnet does not have Internet Gateway and then we have created this security group called allow all traffic which will basically allow all traffic from anywhere. After this uh, we have to create an ECS cluster which will host both the services A and B. So we are going to create two ECS services, service A and service B, both have to be under the same cluster. 
can be under different clusters as well as I told before. Send this command. This will also create a service discovery namespace which will be linked to this ECS cluster. This is the cluster created. This is the namespace. Then we should create ECR repositories, build the Docker images and push them into these repositories. There will be two repos, one for service A and another for service B. These are the ECR repos created. This was service A and this was service B. Then we should deploy the IAM roles. We should create a task role for ECS tasks. We should also create a task execution role for ECS services. Since services have to perform tasks like downloading images from ECR, creating CloudWatch log groups and push logs, we should add appropriate permissions to these roles. This is the task role and this is the task execution role. Then we have to deploy the ECS task definitions from which the corresponding ECS tasks will be built. These are the task definitions created. This one is for service A. You can see the JSON here. So the service A will be running on port 8080. The name is service A. And this is for service B. Service B is also running on port 8080. Then we need to deploy ECS services. These are the service connect configurations for service A. You can see that service A is just a client meaning it can call other services through service connect but cannot be called by another service. Service B is both a server and a client meaning it can be called by other services through service connect. It can also call other services. Basically service A can call service B but not vice versa. In the intro, I told you about the friendly name, right? The service A will call service B using this friendly name and this port. I mean like this. We have to wait for tasks under both service A and service B to start. Okay, this task is running. Let's go to service B. It's still pending. You can see that the service B, I mean the task under service B is not starting. We are getting this error. 
Please pause the video and comment why it is not working. Basically, the service B is unable to pull images from ECR service because it does not have access to internet as it is in a private subnet. Please note that the services like ECR, STR, public services and can be accessed through internet. We can solve this by multiple ways. Number one, we can attach an internet gateway to this private subnet, make it a public subnet, but that's not what we want. Number two, we can place a NAT gateway in the public subnet and route the traffic from the private subnet to the internet through this NAT gateway. Well, that is one option. The third option would be to create necessary VPC endpoints, also called as private links, and make the ECS service pull the ECR images without going through the internet, but only within AWS private network. This is more secure than NAT gateway as internet traffic is avoided. Okay, let's create the ECR private links. Okay, we have created the private links for ECR. This one is for Docker and this one is for API. We need to create two private links for ACR. Let's see if service B launches tasks again. In the meantime, you can notice that the ECR service connect creates a sidecar container under both service A and service B. Okay, we get the same error. This is because ECS tasks hosted on Fargate 1.4.0 require both Amazon ECR VPC endpoints and Amazon S3 gateway endpoints. Let's create the S3 gateway endpoint too. Okay, we have uh, created the S3 private link. Let's see if service B launches the task again. In the meantime, let me show you the attributes of uh, all the private links. This is S3 gateway endpoint. Okay, though the previous error was resolved, this time we get an error related to CloudWatch logs. Your ECS service is unable to create CloudWatch logs, log groups and publish logs into the streams. For this you have to create another VPC interface endpoint for CloudWatch logs. Let's create that too. Okay, we have created the private link for CloudWatch logs as well. Let's see if the task is started. Let me force a new deployment. Okay, the task under service B started successfully after creating all the required private links. It is important to find whether four private links or a single NAT gateway cost more. We have to choose the cheapest solution. Please note that sometimes service A won't be able to communicate with service B in spite of all the correct settings. This is due to a lag. To avoid this, we have created service A only after service B is created using Terraform's depends on meta argument I mean this
let's test it go to service a and get the public ip of its task copy the ip this service a application will be running on port 8080 the application is loaded click the get country button nice service a is able to communicate with service b through service connect successfully let's go to the namespaces click on this namespace and then uh, yeah this is the discovery name created click on this here you can see a service instances created and a service b this is the task id of service b click on this then you can see that this is running on port 8080 and this is the private ip of this task so it's b task go to task definition and then click service b you can see that this is also running the port 8080 the same port will appear here if you go to the service and then I'll go to service connect maybe you can try to update the service here you can see this drop down port alias this value is coming from here service b and then you can give it any name give discovery any name and then you can add the dns and then this port has to match this port similarly for service a you can go and edit you can go to the task definition of service a Yes, son. Its name is Service A. And in drop down, you can see. I mean, you, you won't have the drop down here because that will appear only for client and server. Since Service A is just a client, you won't have to set all those settings here. Suppose if you had chosen Service A to be both a client and a server, then can add this let me cancel this finally don't forget to destroy all the resources to avoid incurring unnecessary costs let me run the make destroy command okay all the resources are destroyed if you find this video useful and interesting please do like this video comment share subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon thank you